match. I mean, because I, you know, I'm on lots of, I am on lots of podcasts and uh, busy on pod match. So I just kind of go through and if I find a connection with the subject that the host is um, focused on, or I feel like my story could be of service to the audience, then I always try to reach out. So that's a good thing because um, let me see here. According to this, you've dealt with families uh, for sexual abuse, domestic violence cases, mental health struggles, uh, the whole um, the whole deal with my podcast is for people to understand what it's like for those people in those positions mm-hmm. because it's it's always easy to tell people what they can do, what they should have do, uh, how they can be better. It's easy to say that, but it's even harder if you're the person in that position when someone's telling you this, but they're not providing you any resources or any way to help. Uh, I remember covering uh, suicide prevention once. It was a two-part podcast on the stuff that people needed to know what they... uh, Jeez, it's been two years since I did that. (laughs) It's on the resources they needed, the hotline they needed to cover, things of that nature. Uh, I've never covered sexual abuse cases. Um, I just felt that if I'm going to cover a topic like that, I need to have someone on on the show for either a live a live stream. I'm planning to do live streams uh, <laughs> starting starting next week for my YouTube channel. So. Uh, and then the recording will be transcribed to audio only for my podcast because most of mine are audio only. They're not uh, videos, but oh. it's something new I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, most of my podcasts are hosted on Anchor. So it's sponsored and powered by Spotify, a service that I'm not too proud of. <laughs> 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 when you when you want to listen to music but you have to pay 25 bucks a month it's not really worth the uh the bonus even if you're a student yeah let me see here so in related in relation to these it looks like based off of what you've you've sent me there's like four or five different topics that we can get out of this um would that be something that you're up for uh yeah okay. like i said it's- if you feel like I can be, a, I mean, for me, it's, it's about service, right? So mm. I'm always, you know, someone shared a story and that saved my life. So for me, it's being able to go out there and share my story in hopes that I can help someone else. So, Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Cause with that, I can have you, if you'd like, I can have you make sure I'm doing this. Uh, I can have you on here, a uh, uh, guest star on my podcast up to four times uh, for each individual thing. I think this month is a uh, foster kid appreciation month. I do believe uh, something new. I just learned. I didn't know that that was a thing. And my oh. heart goes out to all the kids that end up in foster care because I could have been one of them. Um, so and that's that's a thing that people need to understand i believe it or not when i started this podcast i picked a niche that i didn't think anybody would listen to or care about i just got tired of i was a i was in college i don't think i have the story yet on my podcast itself so i'll tell you when I was in, uh, back in college before the whole pandemic happened and I was staying on, on site, the reason I started my podcast was because I didn't have friends and I needed something to do. But in observing what the other college students were doing and how they were behaving, it just made me upset. It's so like, there are homeless people who are here who need help. And I understand some people fake being homeless so they can get a lot of money. That's true. It does happen. But it's for the ones that didn't plan this whole thing to happen or didn't want none of this to happen. Some of them were affected by the 2008 stock market crash and haven't recovered since because of what happened to them or their identity has been completely destroyed. So it's easy to say that someone can easily pick up what they're doing and go back to where they were or try to correct it. It's not that simple. If it was that simple, then they should be able to go to any DMV and re-register to get their ID. They can't do that. 
and they can't walk into a library it's dressed or looking like the way they do because they smell they look like they're crazy they look like they've been dropped you know crawled out of a sewer so people generally don't want to be around them they don't want to be anywhere near them and it seems that there are more people like me that seem to care about this because the more i make episodes the more i see people still listening it's like 15 20 people every time i release an episode want to want to hear what what is today's topic going to be about i I don't know whatever whatever is requested (laughs) um i've only had two podcast topics i've ever covered that were uncomfortable and one of them was contraception and the other one was menopause so (laughs) yeah i can see that yeah it's not 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 fun um contraception was a weird, little weird it was already um awkward going about it until i got to the last one which was from both male and female and it's like just go ahead and cut it <laughs> and as a guy that doesn't sound right so no <laughs> and then menopause was just a weird topic to start with but i have covered date rape i do believe yes <laughs> and i'm re-uploading all of my podcast episodes on youtube so if you don't mind, um, there's a platform that I use now uh, to do my recordings or to do the live streams. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Sure, I still, yeah, it's called Riverside. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I would be using for that platform. I would have to send you the link. Um, I would need to have your email, but I'm pretty sure I can uh, you can send that to me on Podmatch. So, yep. all right. Do you have any questions for me? No. Let no. And just... you start. You said you started doing the podcasting when this is this is new for you. Is it? Yeah, I started it back in 2017. So I've been doing oh, wow. it now for oh, for a while. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, a, that's a veteran. Wouldn't say veteran. Still figuring <laughs> things out as I go. Uh, well, because if you listen to some of my podcasts, you'll, you'll be figuring things out like that for the rest of your life. Trust me, we all do. So, yeah, no, my my uh, my girlfriend, she's wonderful. She's always been there. She's helping me out with a lot of things. I'm a special needs case in in any regard. So when it comes down to someone who would understand how a disabled person feels. I can understand that because I've lived in that I've lived in that area before. Uh, so, as a person who has limitations, who doesn't like to be barred down, I try my best to pr- exceed those limitations consistently so I can move forward. And uh, sometimes it works out for the best, and sometimes I'm laying flat on my behind, passed out at home because. I've not only exceeded my limit, but I tried to exceed, I tried to go past that and expand on it without understanding the repercussions fully. So now if I attempt to go above and beyond, I know what my original limit is and I tried to stay within that bracket. Why is this thing doing that? (laughs) Uh, Okay, I broke it. I don't know if you can tell from the background. It's not supposed to look like that. The wavy, the wavy lines. Mm-hmm. Oh. For some reason, on my end, it's frozen. Oh. <laughs> so I'm I'm always fiddling with something. Uh perks of being hyperactive, but not quite ADHD. <laughs> So the fact that I could sit down for 30 minutes to record a podcast in the first place apparently is a feat in itself. <laughs> awesome. you, should, you should hear some of the stuff that the passengers I have when I drive for Uber and Lyft, when I find out I have a podcast, the ride goes from being extremely quiet to they're like, hey, does your, is your dash cam recording? I'm like, it's always recording. Cool. Let's talk about this topic. And then they hope they're in an episode of my podcast, which they will. Some of them will be. Uh, and they've given their consent. That'll be on video because I have to ask first. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be interesting to listen to Uber ride topics <laughs> in the future. 
So because yeah. I'm, the what I'm waiting on before I start uploading more of season three is to finish uploading all hundred and something episodes. I don't even know how many episodes are in season one. I just thought about it. <laughs> Have you had a chance to look at my podcast, actually? Let me ask that. I haven't. No, I try to get in on the weekends because I'm so busy during the week, but I, uh, I'm usually trying to catch up with 10, 10 to 15 different podcasts. So, Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's see. There are 145 episodes in season one. Season two came short because of last year. 2021 sucked. Mm-hmm. I only got 25 episodes out of that. And they were meditation skills, minimizing distractions. What is negotiation? Delegation skills. I don't remember what this one is. Some personal development skills, employment ability skills, and care for your body and why. I need to work on my titles. (laughs) And then I covered charisma, SWOT analysis, and what is bigotry? Because someone asked me to do that, and that was definitely uncomfortable. Mm. it's no different than prejudice and racism and that's another thing that i'm not afraid to talk about people don't want to talk about racism they don't want to talk about the stuff that's obvious um and as a guy who's incapable of of, uh, showing empathy but can show sympathy it's that that goes back to that whole medical incident Mm. so i survived a really bad car wreck at the age of three Uh, yeah seven scars and a head injury but i recovered um but not without some repercussions i have both my hands but i can only use uh one so my left Mm -hmm. hand i can pick up stuff and i can move things and that's it Mm -hmm. what about you what's your story just like i said going through um nine years of abuse at my grandpa's hands and then uh, going into high school, getting severely depressed, uh, becoming suicidal. Um, I started cutting as a way of dealing with the overwhelming emotions that I had no outlet for. Um, Got through high school, got married, had kids, but was still just completely um, emotionally a wreck. I didn't have any coping skills. So I left my marriage and jumped into a really toxic relationship, which ended up being over a decade of domestic abuse. And um, that relationship ended. And then right after that relationship ended, my ex-partner committed suicide. And um, so I just struggled to deal with uh, the emotions of never feeling okay in my life and uh it was going to a workshop that i attended um and i attended the workshop two days before i had set the date to take my life um i had decided i was gonna drive up into the mountains and shoot myself and uh i went to a women's workshop on a saturday with the monday being the date i was going to end my life and I heard three stories that Saturday that absolutely changed everything in my life. And uh, I learned that I can be okay um, by doing the work on myself and getting really responsible, um, getting honest with myself and being responsible for where I'm at instead of placing the blame on everybody else. And, uh, And so that's what I go out and I talk about now. I work with women, I do a workshop, and uh, just try to help people heal and rise out of where they're at. So, That's and I mean, now I'm, now I'm happily married and, you know, I live on a six acre hobby farm with goats and dogs and, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's great. So. Yeah. Cause I could, hearing that, um, the way I picture it is that you're, uh, it would cause some uh, trust issues in men, but it looks like you've managed to work through that. And that's good. And I'm, uh-huh. I, I'm happy you did, because if you had committed suicide, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And that would be really sad. Um, uh-huh. Of course, there wouldn't have been a chance that I would have known you. But if I had found out about you through some third party, then it would have still been sad, because then I'd be like, well, dang, her story is really, really bad. 
you know, mm-hmm. I wish she didn't have passed because then I'd love to hear it and I'd, I'd love to help you out. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I can't, I can only do so much, especially for women. And uh, because I'm a guy, a lot of the times it's, it's easy for, for a lot of women to look at me like, I'm like, you're a guy. How would you know how it feels to be a woman? You've mm-hmm. never even had a, a, a period before. It's like, yeah, I have never had that before. I would never mm-hmm. want that. I watch you guys suffer for a week. Some of you mm-hmm. two days, some of y'all for two weeks, depending on what the problem is. It, mm-hmm. It's not fun. You know, my, my, my girlfriend had a, one of those contraceptions I mentioned, the one in her arm, she had it changed and replaced last year. And since then, up until now, it was causing her problems, but she didn't realize it until, I want to say, February, March, where mm-hmm. a, a period that just ended randomly started up again, and she was bleeding for 14 days. Oh, so wow. uh, it, it took her having to go to the doctor to find out that it's either the implant in her arm uh, or something else is wrong because she randomly mm-hmm. became diabetic within that time frame. Like there was no pre-diagnosis. She just became diabetic overnight and they had to give wow. her uh, emo- uh, like, what's it called? Uh, a different type of birth control to take with it that would help stabilize her uh, hormones and her emotions. It, uh, speaking from experience, I don't think it did anything for her emotions, but uh <laughs> But it definitely helped out a little bit. The bleeding stopped. Her period came to an end and she was fine. Um, Because if I'm not mistaken, depending on it, for each woman, it's different. But for the most part, if you're on birth control, your period is going to be spanned out over a certain period and you're not going to have it as often. If you do, it's not going to be that long. Or if it is, it's usually pretty bad in some cases, in some cases. So my my knowledge on what 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 would help a female in any regard is limited like going over mm-hmm. menopause was really uncomfortable for yeah because it's like talking about depression and i've done that and that was really what's the word sad i think that's the best word mm-hmm. <laughs> so and yeah. she she works as a social worker so for her, she's used to working with special cases. She's used to working with regular kids. So dealing with me, who, uh, if I was to take one of those tests, shows that I'm on the spectrum on the opposite side of a person who doesn't understand social cues. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like, I understand why you're the way you are. So, but for everyone else, she's like, you're going to have to either take it in stride or just not say anything, which is hard because if I have to talk, it, 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 it's, it, it's a pain. So Mm-hmm. because they're going to look at me and from if if i was if i was the person in your position right and you were going through all of that and i tried to come up and help and talk to people about these issues or like suicide prevention and you'd look at me and the way i'm talking and carrying myself you think something's wrong with me <laughs> the way she put it is like to everyone else i look like a domestic abuse case waiting to happen because <laughs> i I'll, I'll change on the, like my personality has two different sides and I can switch between the two of them at will, depending on what the situation is. I can go from being extremely happy and go, happy, go lucky and not, not caring to a very mean and aggressive person in the state that if you said or did something in that realm of this is my trigger, I've asked you not to go there and you did it anyway, you know, just straight up plain dirty and a lot of people don't like that like the other day uh, she did something to get on my nerves when I came downstairs I was upset and I told her I said can you please just be quiet stop talking and her sister was sitting on the couch and she was about ready to attack me because she she's you know she wants to protect her sister but she doesn't understand that that's something that I'm still working with and I've been dealing with for 20 years I'm 28 now but her sister, but, but my girlfriend already are, understand that she knows that I'm this way and that if, I, if she gives me five minutes, I'll go back to normal. Mm. So, and she'll just leave me alone. Even though it upsets her, she'll be like, oh, I don't want to be bothered with you and she'll walk away. That's her telling me, hey, snap out of it. We don't need you like this because if you do snap and my sister's present and her boyfriend, things are going to look bad for you. And I don't mm-hmm. want to be the guy that that ends up on the side of the person who's the domestic abuser who actually didn't do anything whatsoever. You know, I'm mm-hmm. I'm probably one of the nicest guys you'll meet. I'm harmless. Yeah. Well, at least that's what I've been told because I've had people beat on me and I don't do anything. 
So I, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's not a good thing. I've been called wimp for, for years. Oh, jeez. So, yeah. So being the guy that's usually pushed around and, like, no, and you know, that people don't like, it, it's never fun. So being in your position, I can imagine it being t- five to ten times worse. Mm-hmm. So. so when do you normally do your recordings? What time of the day? Because what time is it? What, what time is it where you are? Uh, here in Texas, it's two twenty-two p.m. Your thing oh. said Mountain Time. So where are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. Um, I'm kind of the. Uh, well, I'm in Canada, so I'm kind of the Calgary, oh. uh, the Alberta, BC kind of area. So I'm right in the the Rocky Mountains there. So it is twenty after one my time. So you're one hour, I guess, ahead of me. So. Wow. Uh, so that makes you the second person that I know from Canada. There we go. <laughs> you'd, be the second, you'd be the second person I've hosted on my podcast that's from Canada. There was a, someone else that does podcasting. Uh, she suffers from sickle cell anemia. Her name was Gloria. Uh, mm-hmm. Haven't heard from her in a while. I, don't, I hope she's doing okay. Uh, I haven't seen her podcast uh, published any new episodes recently, but uh, she lived up there. Oh man, one of the things she went over was the whole ca- Canadian stereotype thing. <laughs> yes. I was like, okay, uh, we're going to have to definitely address that because yeah. we talked about it, but I never did get to get it into a podcast. And that's something I want to cover too, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so people don't think that Canadians are all about, you know, their syrup. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I don't, I don't live in an igloo. I don't have. Yeah. You know, and oh. you don't have a weird accent either, unless you're just from some other country that you happen to come back from. That's very. Uh, so when do you, when do you normally record? My podcasts are usually, I'm usually recording these things at like one in the morning. Uh, occasionally I'll record them during the day if I feel like it, because I want to have at least two or three episodes ready so I can release them subsequently. If I know I'm not going to have enough time. Uh, if I have guests, I record them during the day because I know they're not going to be up at three in the morning. Um, I mean, what are you doing at three in the morning? Sleeping. Yeah. So (laughs) that's not going to work. So uh, while I have my interview time set from 10 a.m. to five, that's usually the only time I'm sitting in front of my computer uh, before I either go back to work or I shut down this computer and I go straight to my work computer because I work from home as a call center agent. Okay. Uh, yeah, roadside assistance. Definitely fun in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's like, I, bet. It's like uh, I need a tow. I was like, okay, what is the reason for your call? Uh, my boyfriend ran over the keys with the lawnmower, so I can't get it started. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Wait, repeat what you just said? She's like, yeah, it was in my pocket, and then he ran it over with the lawnmower. Okay, that makes even less sense. All right, where, what is your location, ma'am, so I can send the tow truck driver out there? And then I get to the point where I call the service provider and they're like, okay, so what seems to be the problem with the vehicle? And then I explain it to him. He's like, what did you just say? (laughs) I was like, like, she said he ran over the keys for her car with the lawnmower, but they were originally in her pocket. I I can just imagine the look on the the, uh, service provider's face. But I can tell you what he said. He said, I'm sorry, son, but that don't make no sense. Uh, but uh, if they need a tow, I can tow it. But if I need to get into the car, they kind of screw. Yeah. I said, take a flatbed. I, <laughs> that's yeah. all I can tell you. He yeah. said, oh, if I take a flatbed, I'm going to drag it. Oh, jeez. It's a so 2002 I... Ford Camaro, uh, Chevy Camaro. I doubt you'll destroy it. Yeah. yeah um so can i do you have a, a link so i can just go on and book on the site the same as like how do i book in how do we schedule in so when it comes down to uh riverside i can send you the uh <laughs> rolling out the red carpet um you can request again through my ca- uh calendar okay. uh, a, a time that you would like to do a recording um, and when we do that, I can use the chat here to send you the link. Because ha- I let me see here, you'd be a guest, so I'd copy the link here. Let me go ahead and click on this and tell me uh, how this uh, loads for you. Let me see. Is that your husband? No, that's Tony Robbins. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> See, that's something I wouldn't I wouldn't know. I don't I don't do sports. Um, so uh, he looks. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, no, my <laughs> my range of what I know is limited to education, school, tech, video games, and books. Mm. And I um, that- have you ever? Have you ever read the book um, Awaken the Giant Within? No, it's been recommended to me now about three times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have yet to get a hold of it because I, I, I don't like reading digital books unless I have an audio book. I prefer having a physical book like the one right here in my hand. Me um, too. I agree. Okay, Joshua, I'm going to, because I'm just on my lunch break, so I actually have to go back and sit behind my desk. So. Yeah, by all um, means, go ahead. So I will, um, I'll go on to Podmatch then and I can just click on and get onto the calendar there and get something scheduled. Mm-hmm. All right. Good? And then that link did work for you in the chat. Yes, it did. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. By all means, enjoy the awesome. rest of your day. Please right, stay Dave. safe. Okay. Take it's... care. Have a good night. You too. Or day for you. Bye. Ah, all right.